In this video, we demonstrate the use of the split dam. The split dam is ideally applied from the second premolar to the second premolar with the anterior region open, so the rubber dam isn't placed around each tooth. The split dam can be applied when there is an orthodontic retainer and it's not necessary or possible to isolate every tooth. How do you apply the split dam and how do you know where to punch the holes? With the stainless steel dam it template, it is easy to punch the holes for the split dam. The triangle in the middle shows the location and size of the holes. These locations can then be marked with a marker or a pen. After marking these locations, you will see the same triangle on the rubber dam. We advise to use the largest hole on the rubber dam punch. You have to check carefully whether the punch is completely free of all the rubber dam. The moment you do not remove it, the punch may no longer cut good and clean holes and you can run a considerable risk that the rubber dam will tear when applied. In addition, the presence of leftover rubber dam can also cause the wheel to stop running properly and damage the wheel. This can also ensure that you can never punch clean good holes again in which your punch will have to be replaced. The residual rubber dam can be easily removed with a perio probe or regular probe. When cutting the holes, I always like to place the rubber dam on the frame. I make sure the wheel runs well and I cut the three holes. When cutting every hole, it is advisable to check whether the punch does not get stuck anywhere and it cuts beautiful round and clean holes. After the three holes are punched, two sides must be joined together. I mark them here for the video. With scissors, I can connect these sides and make sure that the split dam is ready for application. Let's grab the model. The split dam can be held in place in three ways, with clamps, with a wedge head, or with a piece of rubber dam. I first demonstrate the fixation with clamps. Personally, I always like to use premolar clamps, in this case a W2A. After application of the clamps, the rubber dam can be placed. When applying the rubber dam, it is important that it is placed behind the bracket, the arch of the rubber dam clamp. We do this on the left and on the right side. After the rubber dam is placed behind both brackets, it can be tensioned in the front. This is easier in the mouth than on the model due to the presence of saliva. You can pull the dam over the anterior teeth with your fingers. Because the holes are placed quite close to each other, the rubber dam is under tension, so it automatically remains apically of the teeth. After the rubber dam has been applied, it is important that the rubber dam is properly placed between the contact points. In the mouth, this is again easier than on the model and it often works with your fingers and a dental floss. In case it is a bit more difficult, like on this model, you can use a period probe or a flat plastic to get the rubber dam in the right place and to pass it through the contact point. The moment you want to pass the dental floss behind the clamp, you will often see that it hangs on the tooth behind it. In this case, the floss can be slightly repositioned using a perio probe or a regular probe. After the rubber dam has been flossed through the contact points, you have to put some tension on the rubber dam to get all the folds out. We repeat this process on the other side until the rubber dam is properly applied through the contact points and has no folds.
The split end has now been applied and sometimes it may still be necessary to adjust your frame so that it's nicely in the middle and the patient's nose isn't covered. As I said, there are three ways to fix the rubber dam. In addition to using clamps, you can also use wedgets. What you could do is stretch the rubber dam in the mouth and then put a piece of wedget through the contact point. But you will need help for this. Your assistant could either hold the rubber dam in place or apply the wedget. However, there is also a different and cheaper solution than using a wedget. You can cut a corner of the rubber dam and roll it. You actually make some kind of a custom wedget. If you roll it and then stretch it, you can easily pull it through the proximal contact. Excess can then be removed with scissors. Now you have seen how to apply the split dam and fix it in three different ways. Sometimes it can also be helpful to close the palatal aspect. In that case you can apply some putty or bite reg registration material to make a leak proof seal. However, this is not necessary in every situation. <laughs>